this video I will be showing you my Musa succession knowledge gathered in the last two months. This will be newbie friendly guide, so if you feel you are advanced enough, just use the timestamps I've provided to get to the part you would like to see, I will do skills overview, show you my PvE combos, as well as my tips and tricks about the class. So let's start with amount of skill points needed for this class and how to obtain them quickly. You are going to need around 1000 skill points to learn all Musa succession skills, excluding the weight training, which you don't really have to level up before you get all the other skills. If you still don't have around 1000 of skill points on your Musa succession, I would suggest you few places, where you could grind to get them, that would be Pali's Forest, then Desert Naga Temple, then Crescent Shrine, Titum Valley and Round Sulphur Mine. Keep in mind, you will need around 210 AP for Round Sulphur Mine. If you don't know how to get to these places, just press Escape, then Adventure, then Monster Zone Info, and then just click on this arrow to guide you to that place. Though, most of these places are in desert and you will have no navigation to them. So if you are really completely new, I would go to Polly's Forest. When you get to these zones, just use Carver plus Cyclone Slash by pressing Shift plus LMB plus LMB, like this, or Shift plus Q for Rising Storm, that would look like this. And you should be able to get your skill points pretty fast, especially if you use one of skill points increase scrolls. Just before we start with learning skills, I want to mention that you can put some skills on your quick slot bar, if you wish. All these skills that have the yellow stroke around them can be put on quick slot bar. Just click on them and drag them to one free slot, like this. So, let's begin with learning skills and explaining them. If you already learned all of your skills, feel free to skip to the next part of the video, using the timestamps. So beginning with Slice, this is your basic attack and you want to max it out, as it will help you in at lower levels. You can use it for example to recover your WP when you are out of it. Proceeding with Divider, it's a very good skill that you want to max out and get it to Prime after you've done your Musa Succession questline. It is very easily casted and it recovers your HP when it's off cooldown. It also debuffs the enemies with minus 20 DP, and gives you the passive buff, Serene Mind, which I will get to in few minutes. The next skill is Backstep Slash. This skills is only relevant after level 56 and completing succession questline as it also gives serene mind buff and is a super armor skill, what super armor skills are I'll be explaining later in the video. Proceeding with blind thrust, this skill gives you 30% critical rate buff for 10 seconds, you want to max it out as soon as you can, and start using it before getting into mobs. The next skill is nemesis slash, I personally don't use this skill and I just locked it so it doesn't mess up with my combos. You can lock it by clicking on this little clock next to the skill. If you want to spare some skill points, just don't learn it. Proceeding with Blind Slash, this is also one of these skills that you will need for the Serene Mind buff, after level 56, so try to max it out. The next on the list, the Wire Wind Cut, I use this skill until level 56, after 56 it's kinda useless because you have many more efficient skills, so I locked that one too. Proceeding with Carver, a very important skill, same importancy as Divider. It debuffs enemies for minus 20 dp and recovers your wp. So try to max it out all the time during leveling up and get the prime version of it so we can make proper combos later on. So just remember, divider recovers your hp and carver your wp. Moving on with skill gale, this is one of our three main skills, so make sure to learn it as soon as possible. It does great damage to the enemies, has good movement ability and takes 12% of their evasion rate for 10 seconds long. We also want prime version of this one too, I will show you later in the video how to use this skill properly. The next one, Dragon Bite, this skill is our quickest and safest debuff, and way to get our serene mind buff, since it has forward guard applied, during the skill animation. I will explain the forward guard skills, later in the video, and yeah, make sure that you take Dragon Bite on prime level as well. Next skill will be Ultimate Dragon Claw. I found this skill useful on lower levels but after level 56 I couldn't find good use for it, so I just locked it. If you want to spare skill points after level 56 just unlearn this skill. The same goes for Lunar Slash, I just couldn't fit it in my combos. So if you are still low on skill points just skip this skill. If you find a good way to use it, feel free. I will leave it locked for now. Proceeding with Rising Storm, you will want to max out this skill as soon as you can. This skill is very good even on earlier levels. It is a super armor skill and it gives us plus 20 dp buff and does a very nice amount of damage. Combined with Rising Storm Blaze, it is a skill worth putting in the endgame combo. So make sure to get it to prime level. I will be showing you how to use it properly later in a combo. This Cyclone Slash skill is also a must for Succession Musa. Max it out as soon as you can and get it to prime level. Continuing with Stub Arrow. You will get this skill early on, it's not really efficient for PvE but it's pretty good in PvP. 
But yeah, since this is a PvE guide, I will let you to choose what to do with it. If you have extra skill points, just learn it. It will be useful for our quick shot, later in the skill enhancements. Evasive shot is actually our second iframe skill, it's kinda odd to cast, but it gives us invincibility during the skill animation. More about iframe skills later on in the video, so if you have few spare skill points, just learn it. Moving on with the arrow grapple, this skill is mostly used for movement purposes. I would say more in PvP than in PvE, so you don't really have to learn it. I will show you later how you can use it, then you can decide, if you need it or not. If you learn stub arrow, learn this one too, it allows you to shoot another arrow in a row. Charged stub arrow is a nice range skill, can be used in PvE and PvP, I sometimes use it when I am lazy to dash to one mob that survived after killing a mob group, so I wouldn't prioritize it, if you still don't have enough skill points. Moving on with blooming, this is basically our main skill or one of the four main damaging skills on Musa Succession, try to max it out as soon as you can and get prime level of it. It does tons of damage, takes players WP on the hits, and it's repeatable, due to serene mind buff. I will show you how to use it later in a combo, continuing with mountain divide skill. This skill becomes available after you complete the Magnus questline, so make sure to finish the questline as soon as possible, cause this skill is insanely good. It has frontal guard protection and does very good amount of damage. Next one is the Eye of Storm, this is our so-called class buff, it gives us 50% all resistance like knockdown, grapple, stiffness, stun, etc which is useful in PvP as well at some spots in PvE, then all AP plus 20%, critical rate for 30%, melee accuracy rate for 15% and movement speed for 20%. You will be as well under super armor while turning on the skill. So choose wisely when to use the skill in PvP. In PvE I would use it as soon as it gets off cooldown, to improve your grinding results. Moving on with Fiery Angel. This is our second best movement skill, since it's protected with super armor and doesn't consume stamina when it's used. However it stops our stamina regeneration during the skill animation learn it as soon as you can i will show you later how to combine it with other skills to get away even faster crust crusher is a pretty good damaging skill which can as well knock down enemies in pve definitely consider learning it as soon as you have enough skill points proceeding with musa spirit skill this is one of our three self buffs musa spirit will recover your wp without needing to hit a mob just press shift plus e it also gives us serene mind buff so definitely learn this skill retaliation is our skill for blocking attacks it basically gives us forward guard while we are holding Q button. Get it to prime level, since it does some nice damage and gives us serene mind buff as well. You activate it by pressing LMB while you are holding Q key. Moving on to our main movement ability, Chase. While you are using Chase you are permanently on super armor, when Chase is off cooldown, it even has iframe in it, which makes us invincible on first use of the skill. Now the kicks, I never used these, as they are useless in PvE. They could be useful in PvP but it's very risky to use them. So yeah, if you need skill points, don't learn them at all. This forward roll is completely useless skill, just lock it by clicking on that lock button, so you don't accidentally use it. And the last of our active skills, the Tiger Blade. I don't use this skill so often, it can be useful to run away from something, since it doesn't consume stamina at all and gives us additional 23% of movement speed as well as 20 DP. It just consumes WP. So as long as you have WP potions, you can get pretty far away with it. You are constantly on super armor after you use it, for 30 seconds long. I can imagine it being good in PvP, when you are in need of iframe, since it has it on beginning of the skill, or if there's a lot of debuffs on you, and you want to run out of the situation, but other than that, not really necessary skill for PvE. The animation looks cool though. And the passive skills, most important, least important, always max out these skills, they will give you overall AP, evasion rate, critical hit rate, knockback stiffness resistance, max HP, accuracy rate, extra AP against monsters and special attack damage. The only skill that you should avoid for now, until you get enough skill points is the weight training. Just leave it for the end. Now the rage absorption skills, just use the left one, because at 100% of rage points, it will give you all AP plus 50, and attack slash casting speed plus 40% for 60 seconds. The other one gives you only 25% attack speed on 100% of rage. However on 200% of rage it would give you 40% attack speed and 35% critical rate. So if you want to be able to cast it, you will need friends who will transfer you the rage using this skill, or you get Tungrad accessories, which will unlock your max rage limit. But for now, just lock these two. 
This is emergency escape, every class has it, basically you use it when you are noticing, that you will for sure die. You use it to try to escape and survive. It has cooldown of 5 minutes, proceeding with Black Spirit's Rage, those are the skills, that will give you same buff effects as these rage absorptions, but they will additionally do damage to the enemies as well as debuff them, these are favored in PvP, since they disable or CC the enemy for a second. I prefer to lock these, because sometimes it happens that I activate them unintentionally and I don't want that, you can do however you like. This is how the Dragon Bite 100% Black Spirit Rage version looks like, I couldn't test how the 200% version looks like, because I have no friends, to feed me Rage, Sag, and here we come, to the core skill of Musa Succession. Prime, Searing Mind. Once you understand how this skill works, you've halfway mastered Musa Succession. That's why I left it for end. After we learn how it works, we will start with combos. Let's get into it. Everything you need to know about the skill is shown here, but, let's try to put it in a more simple way. So why do you even need this Serene Mind skill slash buff? You basically need Serene Mind buff, to be able to use these skills, while they are on cooldown. These are our skills which deal most damage, so you may want to repeat them during your combo. And this is why Musa Succession has such high burst damage. Because for example, you can use Blooming over and over again. However the damage doesn't stay the same. These skills will still do better damage when they are off cooldown, but they still do enough, which makes them worth using. So, how do we get this Serene Mind buff, so we can use these most damaging skills while they are on cooldown? Basically, we have all these skills, that will give us the Serene Mind buff, upon using them. Please, take a note, that Absolute Rising Storm is not going to work for us, cause we learnt the prime level of it. I just like how the prime version does more damage and has a way of casting much more faster than Absolute Rising Storm. And I think we have enough skills from which we can get Serene Mind buff, beside Rising Storm. That's why I didn't learn it. I also don't use this Whirlwind Cut skill, because it gets you the Serene Mind buff only at the third hit, so I found it kinda useless. Here we have our skills that give us Serene Mind buff, that we will be using for our combos. So let's see, how to use these skills properly. Before I show you how to repeatedly use Skill Gale, let me show you how to properly use the skill itself. So normally the skill looks like this, you press LMB, then RMB and the Gale is casted. But notice how it has these two hits, before it really moves forward. We always want to make sure to skip these two hits, and this is how we do it. First method will be, holding W and then pressing LMB plus RMB at the same time. Second method will be, dashing backwards, by pressing RMB and then just adding the LMB to it. Third, pressing Shift plus LMB plus RMB to cast Blooming and then, release Shift key to cast Gale instantly afterwards. Once again, if you know how to use these skills, you can skip to the next part of the video, using the timestamps. Fourth way to cast Gale instantly will be after Crust Crusher, so you press S plus C to cast Crust Crusher, and then press LMB plus RMB right afterwards or even during the Crust Crusher animation, to cast Gale right after. Fifth way will be after Backstep Slash, by pressing S plus Space, and then LMB plus RMB right after. You can also cast it instantly after Fiery Angel, so you press W plus C, to activate Fiery Angel, and then LMB plus RMB. And also after Dragon Bite, by pressing S plus LMB to cast Dragon Bite and then LMB plus RMB. My favorite way to cast Gale is RMB plus LMB and W plus LMB plus RMB. And that's it, that's how you use Gale on quickiest ways. Now let's see how to use this Gale skill repeatedly, with help of Serene Mind buff. So, I will use my first Gale just normally, by pressing W plus RMB and then LMB plus RMB. And now, Gale is on cooldown. Notice how I press just LMB now right after Gale to cast the skill, Prime Cyclone Slash, and now I've received the Serene Mind buff. Notice how I then use Gale again, even if it's on cooldown, just because of Serene Mind buff, and the Serene Mind buff disappears. Now let us just remember, that all these skills will give us Serene Mind buff, so we can use Gale over and over again. By the way, if you feel you already understood Serene Mind buff and how the skills work, feel free to skip to the part of video that you would like to see more. So now, because I don't have the Serene Mind buff, I have to get it again, let's use Divider this time, to get it. I am pressing E on my keyboard, Divider gets casted, and I receive the Serene Mind buff, so now I can cast Gale again, and the Serene Mind buff disappears, just like that, I will use Dragon Bite, to get the Serene Mind buff again, but notice how Gale gets off cooldown, while I am doing that, so now I have Gale off cooldown, and the Serene Mind buff on me, 
let's use Gale again, notice how the serene mind buff stayed on me, that's because I used Gale while it's off cooldown, it only consumes the serene mind buff when the skill is on cooldown, so now I am able to repeat the Gale, once again. And that's how you use Gale repeatedly, thanks to serene mind buff. Let's replay what we just did in somewhat faster speed. There it goes, if you still didn't understand how to use it, please rewatch it. So the same that we did with Gale, we can do with these other three skills, Crust Crusher, Blooming and Blaze. Now let's repeat the process once again with Blooming. Just before we start, I just wanted to mention, Blooming can be casted after any skill by pressing Shift plus LMB plus RMB. Like in this example after Crust Crusher. Or after Retaliation, and just like that, after any of our main skills. One thing to mention about Blooming is that we can cast it while we are preparing to shoot stub arrow or charged stub arrow, like this. My favorite way to use blooming is dashing forwards and then doing it. So now, how to use it repeatedly? Just like with Gale, while it's off cooldown, we can use it once, by pressing W plus RMB and then Shift plus LMB plus RMB. And now blooming is on cooldown. So now I will do Cyclone Slash, to get my Serene Mind buff, and there it is. Now I can repeat blooming by pressing Shift plus LMB plus RMB and the serene mind buff is gone. Now to get serene mind buff again, I will just do one of these skills, for example, divider, by pressing E, and the serene mind is back again, which means, time for blooming again by pressing shift plus LMB plus RMB, and serene mind is gone again. So let's get it again by using dragon bite, S plus LMB, and there it is again, so let's do blooming once again. I hope you got the idea of how to use it on repeat with help of serene mind, if not please rewatch it. Now let's see what we did, in somewhat faster speed. You may have noticed, that I always use Cyclone Slash, after Gale or Blooming. Why I do that, is because these two skills have long animation after they get casted, and Cyclone Slash is one way to cancel them. Second way would be Backslash, and the third way of canceling animations after Gale and Blooming will be Rising Storm. Note that all these skills have to be on prime level to work like this. I think I don't need to repeat the serene mind process with the last two main damaging skills Crust Crusher and Blaze. If you still didn't get it, please consider rewatching the part with Gale and Blooming. Though I do have to mention that Blaze can be casted only after Rising Storm, so make sure to get the serene mind before casting Rising Storm, if you want to use Blaze while it's on cooldown. So, now that we gathered all this knowledge, it's time to use it on some combos. I will as well show you my add-ons that will work good with my combos. Let's take a look on my longest combo. Now let me explain the key inputs, in slower version. So, I start with blind thirst, to get myself critical rate buff by pressing LMB plus space, then I proceed with W plus RMB to dash forward, then I hold LMB plus RMB to do gale, after gale I am pressing shift plus LMB plus RMB to do blooming, and right afterwards, just LMB, to cast cyclone slash, and then shift plus RMB plus LMB for blooming once again plus LMB for one more cyclone slash. Then I turn my camera in opposite direction, to do backstep slash by pressing S plus space, so I get to the back of the dolls. Then I proceed with retaliation, by pressing Q plus LMB, and right after, mountain divide, by pressing shift plus F. After mountain divide, I cast divider, by pressing E, and right after divider, shift plus LMB plus RMB to cast blooming again plus LMB for cyclone slash. And then I do, S plus LMB, to cast dragon bite, and then blooming plus cyclone slash again. Then I proceed with Carver, by pressing Shift plus LMB, and then Blooming plus Cyclone Slash again. Then I turn my camera in opposite direction again, imagining these dolls would be mobs that turned their head towards me so I get to their back again by using Backstep Slash, S plus Space. Then I cast Rising Storm by pressing Shift plus Q and right after, adding the LMB, to cast Blaze, and then the Crust Crusher, 
S plus C. After Crust Crusher, I cast Gale, by pressing LMB plus RMB. After Gale I am pressing Shift plus LMB plus RMB to do Blooming. And right afterwards, just LMB, to cast Cyclone Slash. Then Shift plus RMB plus LMB for Blooming once again plus LMB for one more Cyclone Slash. Then I proceed with Divider, by pressing E, and you guessed it right, Blooming plus Cyclone Slash again. Then, Dragon Bite, S plus LMB, and right after, Blooming and Cyclone Slash again. Then Carver, Shift plus LMB and right after, Blooming plus Cyclone Slash once again. Then turning camera in opposite direction, to get behind them again, by pressing S plus space, to cast backstep slash, proceeding with retaliation, Q plus LMB, and just like before, continuing with mountain divide, shift plus F, now divider, by pressing E, and right after divider, shift plus LMB plus RMB to cast blooming again plus LMB for cyclone slash, then dragon bite, S plus LMB, and blooming plus cyclone again, then carver, shift plus LMB, and then blooming plus cyclone slash again, proceeding with turning camera around, and doing backstep slash, S plus space, then shift plus Q for rising storm, and right after, LMB for blaze, and finishing off with crust crusher, S plus C, that would be it ladies and gentlemen, my longest combo, right there, I know, it might be looking complicated, especially for complete beginners, but if you rewatch it, you will for sure understand it. If not, maybe go back to the previous part of video, where I explained how to use Gale and Blooming with Serene Mind buff. The shorter version of my combo, would look like this, basically only one rotation of all skills, including few repeats of Blooming plus Cyclone Slash. Now I will show you the detailed version of it, it's basically the combo from before, cut it in half. Starting with LMB plus space, the blind thrust, then I proceed with W plus RMB to dash forward. Then I hold LMB plus RMB to do Gale. After Gale I am pressing Shift plus LMB plus RMB to do Blooming. And right afterwards, just LMB, to cast Cyclone Slash. And then Shift plus RMB plus LMB for Blooming once again plus LMB for one more Cyclone Slash. Then I turn my camera in opposite direction, to do Backstep Slash by pressing S plus Space. Then I proceed with Retaliation, by pressing Q plus LMB. And right after, Mountain Divide, by pressing Shift plus F. After Mountain Divide, I cast Divider, by pressing E. And right after Divider, Shift plus LMB plus RMB to cast Blooming again plus LMB for Cyclone Slash. And then I do, S plus LMB, to cast Dragon Bite. And then Blooming plus Cyclone Slash again. Then I proceed with Carver, by pressing Shift plus LMB. And then Blooming plus Cyclone Slash again. Then I turn my camera in opposite direction again so I get to their back again by using Backstep Slash. S plus space, then I cast Rising Storm by pressing Shift plus Q and right after, adding the LMB, to cast Blaze, and then the Crust Crusher, S plus C, and that would be the shorter version of my combo. Now, I do have a combo for lazier people, which would also fit for those who still didn't finish the Magnus questline, and don't have the Mountain Divide skill yet, it would look like this. Now in detail, starting with LMB plus space, the blind thrust, then I proceed with W plus RMB to dash forward, then I hold LMB plus RMB to do Gale, after Gale I am pressing shift plus LMB plus RMB to do Blooming, and right afterwards, just LMB, to cast Cyclone Slash, and then shift plus RMB plus LMB for Blooming once again plus LMB for one more Cyclone Slash, then I turn my camera in opposite direction, to do Backstep Slash by pressing S plus space, then I proceed with Retaliation, by pressing Q plus LMB. Then I cast Rising Storm by pressing Shift plus Q and right after, adding the LMB, to cast Blaze. And then the Crust Crusher, S plus C. And then I do, S plus LMB, to cast Dragon Bite. Then I hold LMB plus RMB to do Gale. Then I do Divider, by pressing E. After Divider, Shift plus LMB plus RMB to do Blooming. And right afterwards, just LMB, to cast Cyclone Slash. Then I proceed with Carver, by pressing shift plus LMB, and then blooming plus cyclone slash again. After cyclone slash, I proceed with blind slash, by using my quick slot bar, but you can just press S plus E, to use it, and then blooming plus cyclone slash again. 
proceeding with blooming in cyclone slash once again cause the cyclone slash was off cooldown, so it gave me serene mind. Now I turn camera in opposite direction, to get behind the dolls, using the backstep slash, S plus space, then I proceed with retaliation, by pressing Q plus LMB, then I cast rising storm by pressing shift plus Q and right after, adding the LMB, to cast blaze, and that would be my combo for those, who still don't have the Magnus skill, mountain divide. These are just my combos and my suggestion, they are not perfect, but they fit me the best. I could of course add more blooming to it, but I feel it's not really needed to overdo the blooming, now with the mountain divide skill being added. As you see Musa succession has very huge variety of combos, please feel free to add something or take some skill out, if you don't feel comfortable using it. I've shown you these skills, that will give you serene mind. Basically you just use them, before casting one of our main damaging skills, and you will be fine. Skill rotation doesn't matter at all, just get your serene mind buff and use damaging skills afterwards. I have one in-game suggestion combo, for places like Jifin Underground or Hexa Sanctuary, or just generally, where you don't have enough DP for the place. You always want to make sure to not face the mobs, as soon as they start turning around at you, or using attacks at you, just do for example backstep slash, to get behind them, or just turn camera in opposite direction and dash backwards, to get behind them, like this. That would be it for the main combos, now I want to show you my two examples of completely protected combo. I mentioned the super armor skills earlier in the video and I promised that I will explain what they are. So these super armor skills are there to protect you of crowd controls, like stun, stiffness, etc. These are not really mandatory in PV, but they do reduce damage taken, while you are using them. So here we go with the first one, you rush in with fiery angel, then do the gale, then rising storm plus blaze, and then backstep slash and then just use chase to get out of the situation. The second one is same, but without using the fiery angel. Now, the half protected combos. I mentioned forward guard skills earlier in the video, so let me tell you how they work. They are skills, that will protect you only from front, if somebody hits you from side or from the back, you won't be protected, so always try to have enemy in front of you, before doing these skills. Let's do one combo with mixing our super armor skills with these forward guard ones. You dash in, do the gale, then rising storm plus blaze. Then you turn camera in opposite direction to get behind the enemy, so you have him in front of you, and then proceed with retaliation, mountain divide and crust crusher. I somehow forgot to cast crust crusher in this example, sorry for that. Now let's see, what are the iframes and which ones we've got. Basically this skill will make you invincible, in that few milliseconds of invincibility, you won't take any damage. These would be, evasive shot, first use of chase, when it's off cooldown, and the tiger blade on beginning of the skill. They're also not really mandatory in PV, but still nice to know, if you see some red circle on ground that you can't evade in the moment, just use one of these to not get any damage. Let's get into the Musa succession movement. We do have pretty easy movement, comparing to other classes, we just have to hold RMB, to dash around and be protected while doing that. However if you keep spamming the movement, you will get out of stamina soon, and if you want to additionally use skills that are on cooldown with help of serene mind, you will run out of stamina instantly. So it's important to decide when to dash. Herewith I want to show you few other ways of movement, for example fiery angel, you can cast it without using stamina, however stamina regeneration will be stopped, during the skill duration. I also promised before to show you how arrow grapple works. So you basically press space after certain skills, like for example, after any arrow shot, after divider, after backstep slash. You can use backstep slash and then turn camera in opposite direction and use arrow grapple right after, to cover more range. You can also use it after all these kicks, you can for example put this blunt kick on your quick slot and then just press space after using it. Now let's see how movement would look like, if we combine few skills. Note that all skills would have to be off cooldown to use this kind of movement. Now slowed version, starting off with fiery angel, then arrow grapple, then gale plus cyclone slash to cancel gale animation, then dragon bite, then blind thrust and then just dash. Another combination of skills, would be this. Starting with Fiery Angel again, Arrow Grapple, Gale, Cyclone Slash, Absolute Musa Spirit, Gale, Cyclone Slash, Ultimate Musa Spirit, Gale, Cyclone Slash, and then just Chase. You can also try to replace Cyclone Slash with Divider, but Divider is a little bit slower in my opinion. Even if this is not PvP Guide, 
I would still recommend to stick to super armor skills and super armor movement while you fight other players. I have seen some people doing this ultra fast movement with their musas. I somehow couldn't get it to work, I just can use it when I have Gale on cooldown, it only works then for me. Basically how you activate is, by going into settings, then interface settings, then action hotkeys, and then scroll down to this evasion, ww, setting. Then you insert your mouse or keyboard key that you don't really need. Preferably some side mouse button, if you have such mouse. And then you press and hold that chosen button, plus RMB to dash extremely fast. Note that your stamina will get empty much sooner, than if you dashed normally, that would be it for the movement, from my side. Now let me show you some useful skill animation cancels, for example this carver skill, can be casted by pressing shift plus LMB and it looks like this. Now, you can put it on your quick slot to use it from there, and now it's super fast. This isn't really much needed for PV, could be nice for PVP though, so, you can use mountain divide quickly after these skills, after backstep slash, after retaliation, after gale, after Fiery Angel, after Arrow Grapple, after Rising Storm, and after Forward Chase. You can use Rising Storm quickly after, Retaliation, after Backstep Slash, and after Gale. I've almost forgot to mention Skill Enhancement, so here we go. I would recommend you getting these three skills, Quick Shot, Storm Slash and Ultimate Musa Spirit. Quick Shot is a nice range skill that does good amount of damage. I sometimes use it to finish a mob that stayed alive or just to pull one additional group of mobs. Storm Slash isn't really necessary for us, because we have many skills that will do damage, but it's still nice to have. Most important of them is the Ultimate Musa Spirit, because it will regain your HP without having to hit a mob, give you magic DP plus 15, and critical hit rate by 30%, it will as well give you Serene Mind buff, which brings us to our 3 self buffs. We have 4 skills that will give us additional buffs, without having to hit mobs first. First one would be Rising Storm which gives you 20 DP, then Ultimate Musa Spirit, which gives us 30% critical rate, recovers our HP and gives us Serene Mind, then we have Blind Thrust, that gives us 30% critical rate as well, sadly these two don't stack, so when you use both, you will still have only 30% additional critical hit rate. And then we also have Absolute Musa Spirit which recovers our WP and gives us Serene Mind buff. These are my current add-ons, you can for sure adjust these how you like, but I found they work pretty fine with my combos, that I showed you previously in the video. To learn your add-ons, just visit your nearest skill instructor. This is my current gear, but only because I want to play evasion. In my opinion for PvE, damage reduction would still be better. I just wanted evasion to be a little bit tankier to survive more in PvP. So for damage reduction, you want to get bag gloves and Uragon shoes, you can work towards this and you will be fine. Of course try to replace helmet with Labresca and armor with Fallen God as soon as you can. For awakening weapon, I would probably go with Dandelion until I am able to get Blackstar or Godra yet. Sub weapon would be Kudum, until I gather money for Blackstar, and for main weapon, I would go with Xarka, until I get money for Blackstar. If you don't have money for Vel, just get this destruction stone it will do fine at beginning. For artifacts, I am using these, which give extra AP against monsters, and I use the lightstone set, stomping, which gives me 10 hidden AP, all accuracy plus 16, stamina plus 100 and additional down attack damage. I also use, the wild lightstone set, which gives me additional AP against monsters for plus 18. I also saw people using deathblow. I still haven't used it, but I will for sure get it soon. I think this might be the best lightstone set out of these three, because it gives us extra AP against monsters and additionally critical hit chance. These are my current crystals, that I have in my armor, but note that I am trying to boost my evasion. For damage reduction build, you would want, 2 Hanhun crystals for your helmet. For armor you can get Jin Magic Crystal Kabalinus, or some of special evasion ones, even the basic one would be fine. For gloves, you want the Jin Magic Crystal, Viper, for that extra accuracy. For shoes, you want another 2 of, Han Magic Crystal, whom, to unlock that 4 crystal set effect. Now let's see how my combo performs at some grinding zones.
So yeah, that would be it for this video guys. I hope it will help you on your Musa succession adventure and if you made it to the end, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and stay safe. Peace.